Hello, I'm Pete Delicato, and hopefully you are interested in learning how to use the new web-based editor to create prototypes in iRise. This is not a sales pitch or marketing demo. It's a quick, informal training video that we're putting together on the new iRise 10 editor. Give me five to ten minutes and I'll have you off and running. Here we are on the Definition Center. The Definition Center is where you'll keep and collaborate on all your projects. In iRise 10, we introduce the ability to customize the login page, the background image, the upper left logo, and this message out in the middle that can be useful for letting users know how to find support or get a new Definition Center account. I'll go ahead and log in. Here are my projects. Each of these projects contains a prototype, some requirements, and some other stuff. We're going to focus on editing prototypes in the browser. You'll see a pencil icon when you hover over the thumbnail for any project that you have edit access to on the Definition Center. Click on that to launch the editor. Here's the editor that lets you edit the prototype. You've got your assets on the left, detail controls on the right, and a workspace in the middle. Pretty standard setup. The Screens tab shows a list of all the screens in the project. The Masters tab shows a list of all the masters in the project. Masters, for those who don't know, are useful for creating content that's the exact same across a number of different screens like headers and footers. The widgets tab shows a list of all the widgets you can use on your screens. These widgets come from libraries which are shared collections of related UI elements. To add a widget or a master to a screen just drag it out onto the screen. If you need to of course adjust formatting for any widget over on the right hand side. Now let's add a new screen. This dialog lets you pick a template to use for your new screen. Templates come from libraries just like widgets come from libraries and iRise 10 includes some new page types like the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. So I'm going to use an iPhone 6 template and as you can see it came with a bunch of pre-built content that saves me a lot of time. Let's make this a terms and conditions page. So I'll add some text a checkbox and a couple buttons I'll relabel these buttons when the user clicks a button let's take them to the home page I'll do that by adding a link action in the actions panel to the OK button Now let's suppose I got some feedback on my simple little prototype or I have an idea that these buttons or at least this OK button shouldn't show until the checkbox is checked. So let's add an action to that checkbox to add some interactivity. When the user clicks the checkbox we want the OK button to show but not until then. I'm going to use the click trigger and I'm going to use a toggle action to toggle the visibility of that OK button when the user clicks on the checkbox. Now I'm going to launch this in the player. Well that's not right. Like I said the button's supposed to be hidden at first. So let's go back to the editor. I can hide the button using the right click menu. That sets it to default to hidden when a stakeholder runs a simulation. I can also make that same change using the outline. The outline panel shows a list of all the widgets on the page and their hierarchical order and the checkbox lets you show and hide those widgets. We want that button to be hidden by default, so I'm going to leave it unchecked. Now let's play the prototype again. And there we have it. You can also use the outline to pick action targets. I'll show you what I mean. Let me delete this action we just created for the checkbox, and I'll redo it using the outline. So I'll select the checkbox, add an action, but now when I want to pick my target, the target's not available out in the workspace, so I'm going to move this dialog out of the way and use the outline to target instead. Now I'll play the prototype and there we go. Let's make a modification to the home page to get ramped up on view stacks which are also known as dynamic displays in studio. Here in editor we try to call them view stacks. Let's prototype some top news functionality so you'll be able to toggle between recent news and top news using some links at the top of this page. First I need to create a view stack so I'll right click 
on this section containing the list of articles and I'll add view. That will copy that list of articles and create a duplicate so now I have two views in my view stack. They look the same right now because I essentially duplicated the first one to create the second one. So I'll move a few of those articles around and delete a few others to make it more realistic and to make it clear that you're changing between two different lists of content. Note that the article titles and summaries were grouped, which makes it easy for me to move them around together and keep them aligned. Now I'll name my two views so you can tell them apart. I'll make sure they have distinct names. Now we need to prototype the interactivity that lets these links at the top switch between the two lists you just saw. I'll use a switch view action to do that. So I'll select the link, add action, switch views, pick my targets, which is that view stack in the middle of the page. I could have used the outline to target the view, the view stack as well, if for some reason I couldn't see it in the workspace. Now the view stack is in the list of targets, and I'll use this dropdown to tell which view that view stack should switch to. It's another good reason to name all your widgets. One last thing before we play the prototype, I need to add interactivity to the other link, and I need to set the default view to be recent news. Looks good, so let's play it. Great. Now let's take a look at masters. Masters are really useful when you want the exact same content to appear on a bunch of different screens. You add them to your pages simply by dragging them out, but let's take a look at adding masters to your project. When I add one, I get to pick from the existing masters in my libraries, or I can pick a blank one. Let's say I want to add a footer to some of my pages, or a bottom toolbar. Might as well leverage this one instead of creating my own from scratch, right? I click on it, it's added to my project. Now I can just drag it out onto any screen that I want to use that footer on. If I want to edit it, I can double click on it, or navigate to it from the recent list, add some text, take a look at that home page where we used that footer, and you can see that that text was reflected where we're referencing that master on this screen. Let's look at containment really quickly. iRise allows you to put widgets into other widgets called containers. A section widget is a type of container. When you're moving things in and around a screen, you can work in drop over mode or drop into mode. The latter will drop a widget inside another container while drop over mode will always just lay widgets on top of each other, kind of like you might be used to if you're a PowerPoint user. While you're dragging, if you need to swap mode on the fly, just hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows. Almost done here. Just one last note. Some of the content used in Studio to create ultra high fidelity prototypes is not yet supported here in the editor. Screens that have unsupported content will appear grayed out with a lock symbol on them. So if you ever run into this, now you know why. So get in there and start using the editor. Build some prototypes, share them with some stakeholders, get some feedback, and enjoy. Thanks.